Hi all, uh, I thought it was time for another video just to show off some of the features of the Speedwino engine management system. Uh, it's been about six months since I did the last video and there's been uh, a huge number of changes go into the system since then. Um, so I, I thought it was worth showing off um, what's happened and what's now capable within the system. Um, for those not aware of what Speedwino is, uh, the aim is to have a, a, a fully featured and fairly capable engine management system to control um, fuel injection and ignition um, based on the Arduino platform. Uh, there will be a link in the video's description um, where you can see a lot more information about what the project is all about. Um, and th this video though will just show you some of the, the basic features. Uh, it, it's sort of aimed at people who uh, understand what an engine management system is already um, and just are looking to see what this system can do. So up in front of me now, I've got the basic Tuna Studio um, interface. Uh, this is hooked up to an Arduino running the latest Speedu Speedwino firmware um, and hooked up to a, a simulator as well, just so we can uh, run through some of the features. So starting at the beginning, much like a, a Megasquirt, we have basic engine settings. We can choose our control algor algorithm between speed density and alpha n. Um, we can choose cylinders, uh, injector layout, number of injectors. Um, we can change the different board layouts that we have. A number of people have designed a couple of different boards um, and we can dynamically select those. We can set some basic injector characteristics as well. Um, so set an open time, um, the timing for each of the injector channels, um, an injector duty limit function, um, as well as uh, voltage correction to take, it and take that into account for the pulse width. As far as the triggering goes, this is for crank and cam sensors. Um, since the last video, there's been the introduction of the um, modular decoder system. So now we're not limited to simply using missing tooth uh, sensors. In this case, I have selected missing tooth. Um, however, we now have some options for a, a basic distributor input, um, dual wheel, which is a, a um, where we have one uh, pattern on the crank and another running on the cam, um, as well as a few of the more specific decoders that are used by OEMs. Um, from here we can also set some basic options such as uh, skip revolutions at the start, what trigger edge we want to, to run with um, and the, the trigger angle itself. As far as the missing tooth decoder goes it's been tested well up to uh, 60 minus 2 uh, setups, so th those should all be fine um, and anything running less than that will also be not a problem. And we can also do some basic inlet air temperature density correction um, just based on the temperature that we're receiving um, from that sensor. As far as the tuning itself goes, one of the big changes since the last video was created is that the main tuning tables have all become 16 by 16. They had been 8 by 8 in the previous video. Um, so that's been a, a huge piece of work to get that up and running. Um, all the standard features still apply. We still have a 3D view that we can use. Um, if we just change the stim, we can see that being reflected there as well. have the three main tables there for um, VE for fueling, an ignition advance table, again 16 by 16, and an air fuel ratio target table. As far as the closed loop uh, O2 settings go, we support narrow and wideband sensors. Uh, wideband is obviously certainly preferred. Um, we have a simple algorithm which is uh, just a target chasing system, very very simple um, and a PID algorithm as well which can be um, fairly well tuned to whatever settings you want to run.
Uh, there is a basic rev limiter function with soft and hard rev limits. This is based on um, spark limiting only. There, there's no fuel limiting at this point. Um, but we can do basic retard at a given soft limit followed by a hard cut which cuts all spark off. Finally, we also have basic acceleration enrichment. Um, this is purely based on um, a, a TPS input from the throttle um, and, and set based on time. Uh, in the future, there will be a, a blended uh, map acceleration mode as well. As far as the ignition control goes, we have some basic spark settings. Um, simple advanced setting for when we're cranking, uh, whether we, we have a coil that needs to go high or an igniter that needs to go high or low, and we can have a, a fixed angle for testing if we want as well. That just locks the ignition angle and won't use the, the lookup map. As far as the dwell control goes, it's fairly basic. We can have one setting for cranking dwell and one for running dwell. Um, we also have an overdwell protection system, um, which will make sure that uh, we shouldn't be damaging any coils in case there is an issue. Uh, and finally, we have dwell voltage correction based on the battery input as well. So. As far as the uh, cranking and idle settings go, there's a few settings that we, we can play with here. The obvious one is the, the cranking threshold. Um, we do have a flood clear as well, um, which is useful for testing, and, and some um, priming pulse widths and that sort of thing as well, um, and a, a gamma value for what cranking enrichment we want to use. There's a standard warm-up enrichment table. Um, that's based on coolant as well. Um, after start enrichment kicks in for the first few seconds after the engine first fires. Um, we can set a, an enrichment factor there as well as the number of ignition cycles that that will run for. Whilst we're in warm up enrichment, we can see that, that any of the values here will live change the pulse width accordingly. Finally, one of the other new features is the introduction of idle control. Um, this has been one of the things that mo a lot of people have been asking for. Um, three types of idle control are supported. A, a simple on-off valve um, that triggers at a certain temperature. Uh, a, a PWM valve. We have a, a totally configurable frequency here. You can have you know, nearly any frequency you want between about 10 hertz and uh, about 510 hertz. Once that's enabled, we get a standard um, PWM duty curve, um, which we can set as we need to. We have a separate curve as well for cranking. As well as PWM valves, we do support stepper valves, such as the common GM stepper. Um, these are fairly configurable as well. We can set the, the step time, uh, home steps, minimum steps. Similar to PWM, we get a basic step curve um, where we can use to control the idle that's coming out of that based on the coolant temperature. At this point, it is only open loop idle control. Um, closed loop idle control will come in the future. Uh, there's a couple of accessory outputs that we support. Basic thermo fan settings. Um, we can send the turn a fan on and off at a given temperature um, with basic hysteresis and that sort of thing as well. Another new one is that we have a couple of generic PWM outputs for boost control and VVT control. Simple on off. Um, we can set the frequency again to, to anything between 10 hertz and 510 hertz. Um, oh, I'm turning one of these on. These are an 8x8 3D map that we can use for these. Uh, the, the boost and the VVT operate um, virtually the same, um, except they have obviously have independent maps, uh, independent frequencies and that sort of thing. Okay, as far as a little bit of logging, 
we have a high speed tooth logger um, which will show the input directly as it's seen um, by the ECU itself in this case we're looking at a 24 minus 1 pulse coming through and we do also have um, Tuna Studios VE Analyze Live function for those who have registered. Um, th this is essentially an auto-tune system um, and has been tested and does work well with Speedwino. So I think that's about all of the main features that I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, if you do have any questions, by all means jump onto our forum uh, and ask. The, the system is undergoing seriously heavy development at the moment. Um, and if you do have any new features or anything that you'd like to see, um, we'd certainly be more than happy to take a look. Other than that, thanks for your time and check out the website. Cheers.